Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Neil Haley Show. And uh, last week we talked about the NFL and the problems that were going on in the NFL. Now I want to talk politics and especially the war against ISIS or ISIL. And I wanted to know uh, pretty much what ISIS is and specifically the history of ISIS, who they are, and what our expert feels is going to happen next. So I'm so excited to welcome to the program Keith Davis. And Keith is the uh, director of Rescue Christians, the Wally Shubat uh, Foundation, and much more. Keith, how are you? Fine. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm glad to have you on the show. And uh, tell our listeners a little bit more of your background. Uh, you, you do a variety of things to educate the public is specifically what's going on when especially when we're talking about uh, Muslim extremists and what's going on with terrorism and things like that. Well, back, back in 2003, um, I was listening to a small radio station um, when I heard Walid Shubat uh, be interviewed for the very first time in, in, a, in, a, in any radio show. Right. And uh, so I did, at that time, I was just writing letters uh, to try and counter the, the, the ridiculous nonsense in the media. Yeah. So what I did was uh, I looked up on the Internet and uh, found a, a website, one of like 15 references on Google, and I found a website where there was an email address. I wrote to him. He wrote back to me, and then the rest is history. We, we've uh, reached hundreds of millions of people throughout the world. Uh, Wally has spoken right. uh, in Chile, in Australia, in Canada, all over America, on Europe, and so forth. So, um, and he's appeared on, you know, BBC, right, Fox News, etc. Although many of these shows now don't want to have us on anymore, uh, despite the fact that we've been right all along, <laughs> the political correctness seems to get worse, yeah. not better. <laughs> it, it, it's quite uh, interesting because I've had Teddy on a few times, and Teddy's a, Ted Schubat. Uh, is a good friend. I mean, I've really enjoyed having conversations with him, and he's predicted a lot of these things. But for our listeners today, really, and viewers, uh, the real thing I wanted to, to educate us on is, first of all, because all we hear about is, you know, about ISIS or ISIL, specifically, hey, they're, the terrorism portion of it, and they're really wreaking havoc in the Middle East, especially in Iraq and Syria, but we don't know who they are. I watched a little bit on Fox last night to get a little bit of background. It just happened that I saw that, but I know you have extensive knowledge of, of the group and stuff, so tell us how they were formed and where they are today. Well, basically, they're just a, an extension of Al-Qaeda. I mean, they basically are formed as a splinter group from Al-Qaeda, um, they're, they come from the Wahhabi sect, come from out of Saudi Arabia, um, they're an extension of Osama bin Laden, but, you know, and everyone's gone on how brutal they are. They're no different, really, than Al any of the Al-Qaeda, any of the, of the uh, different organizations like Hamas and so forth. The only real difference is they're very good at doing PR. They've been, uh, and also, right, and the second thing is they've captured land. Those are two real differences between um, Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda has no real interest in land, um, and they're well, they do, but uh, more in, in, ter in terms of the Khalifa. They don't obviously their Khalifa. They want to come out of uh, Turkey, right, which is the old Ottoman Empire, which is now we're just seeing that rebuild. So ISIS basically has taken a, a forward-running position, right. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I ISIS is sponsored by Turkey. Uh, oh, wow. okay. ISIS is doing uh, ISIS is doing. Turkey's dirty work, right? And then Turkey will come along, right, later on, and they'll do away with ISIS, and they'll take over the, uh, the whole area, and the Khalifa will be under Turkey. But I ISIS has been very good at doing PR, where they, with, with the beheadings of people, putting them on the Internet, right, trying to uh, build up their, uh, to make the, the West fear them, right? I mean, because, you know, I mean, the beheadings have been going on for years. I mean, we've seen beheadings ever since, for the last 10, 15 years, they've been going on ever since, um, uh, the, the, was it the Iraq War? Right, okay. Um, and the Afghanistan War. We had Americans beheaded all but before, but we never had the, uh, uh, the fear. Uh, we never took any real notice here until just recently when, you know, two journalists, I think this is really the key of yes. why the world is right, now has really sort of woken yeah. up. That two liberal journalists, and I stress the word liberal journalists, who were murdered by ISIS, 
Right, so these are colleagues of the New York Times, okay. colleagues of all the liberal media. So now, oh my God, it must be terrible how our colleagues are So there's a real danger to us. It, but now all of a yeah. sudden the media wanted to talk about it. Now, now we're talking again to Keith Davis. Uh, from re the director of Rescue Q, uh, Christians and also the Walid Shubat Foundation, and he does much, much more. Now, Keith, now I'm going to step you step back a bit because I still want to go. I, I was watching uh, Fox last night, and they were basically saying that these guys are really, really dangerous, and they've left Al Qaeda because Al Qaeda thought they were too extreme for them. Is that just another part of their whole PR move to, to for for America to fear them more? by using this PR, Twitter, all the different uh, avenues to put this fear that they're more dangerous than Al-Qaeda just uh, as a, a, a political machine in certain aspects? Well, I would, I would think they're not dangerous at all, and here's why. We recognize violence as dangerous, mm -hmm. and we're willing to deal with it. However, the current president of the United States is not willing to deal with it, but eventually we can deal with the violent part right, mm -hmm. of Islam. The most dangerous part of Islam are the peaceful Muslims, the moderate Muslims, the so-called moderate ones, who have infiltrated our government. The Muslim Brotherhood has infiltrated the, the United States government. Um, I mean, in, in Wally's book, Case for Islamophobia, he points all this stuff out. We have a, we have. I'll just give you what, just a couple of small examples. We have um, a, a, an imam. I can't remember his name. It's gone out of my head. But he is the head imam for the for the United States military. Okay. Is a raving Nazi na Nazi promoter of Hitler type uh, promotion of hatred of Jews, has written in the Arabic language, right? The hate uh, these absolutely disgusting Nazi type type things, and he's the head imam of our United yeah. States military. Uh, his name I can't remember his name, but you will find it in the book Case for Islamophobe. Uh, Huma Abedin, who we uh, who we exposed several years ago, right? Um, she was the uh, uh, Hillary Clinton's right hand woman. Right, okay. uh, when she was a Secretary of State, right, and her father and mother worked in the Muslim Brotherhood. They were leaders in the Muslim Brotherhood. She herself used to work for a guy by the name of Al Sif, who was one of the head funders of Al Qaeda. Oh, and wow. she is, really? uh, and she, right, and and just by the fact of her associations, just disqualifies her from working for the uh, in the federal government. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a standard rule. If you have if you have nefarious associations, right, right. even relatives, uh, even if you're innocent, you should not be um, employed by the United States government because you could be compromised. Okay. Yet that was totally overlooked. No, no, there's just, no, 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 there's so, just I, two small cases of infiltration. Now well, you've got uh, people no, who are the, the Muslim Brotherhood are running our our. Our Department of Homeland Security. No, no, I, I I understand that fact. So why is it that the right, other part, and not not your 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 talking points, but others stating ISIS is so dangerous, and that they're like the Nazis, and you don't believe that? So you have a different but, perspective. No, no, I didn't say that. No, no, they are dangerous in terms of their violence. Okay. But we can recognize that danger. Mm -hmm. In other words, we're able, we're able to recognize that danger, and the United States military has the power if, if it's used properly. The problem it's not being used properly is that we're not, we don't have a real plan. We want to arm other Muslim uh, terrorists uh, that we call moderates. They're not moderates, but we call them moderates. We've been trying to arm these so-called moderates for the last 10 years to get rid of Assad, and the same people who want to now uh, help to defeat ISIS, who themselves are just as dangerous as ISIS. The problem is, is that, is that, yes, ISIS is dangerous, but we, as a people and, and the American public, can understand that right. because of the violence they carry out. The problem is that the moderate, so-called moderate Muslim Brotherhood, who have infiltrated our government, are destroying our ability to fight them within. In fact, I would argue that the president of the United States himself is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. Okay, so for our listeners out there, an interesting uh, point of view, Keith, that I didn't hear before, and we definitely will jump back to that, especially for the next segment. But just for our, our, our viewers and listeners out there, when you say the danger, that intimate danger, you just think, hey, we can take them out. It's just like any type of situation. But I, I love the point you made about arming moderates. Uh, think about how Al Qaeda started. We 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 uh we uh in Afghanistan we we gave them the exactly. weapons, right? So 
So yeah, we, we look at the, at the communism and Russia as the main enemy. And it was. So we armed the yeah. so, so we armed the Muslim fundamentalists to fight the Russians, and then gain confidence, uh, and now they turn their guns on us. See, so that's where I, I wouldn't trust it either. And that's another thing when we talk about the whole military plan. So ISIS and Al-Qaeda are not together anymore. And why are there differences between those two groups? There is no difference between them. The only difference is that, that ISIS has now taken over land and called it the caliphate. Right? That's really the only difference. I mean, Al-Nusra is just, is just as dangerous to the United States. In fact, the head bomb maker um, who planted the bomb for the, remember the, the, the foot bomb that, the, uh, that happened uh, uh, just after 9-11, the same guy is now trying to produce bombs that have no metal in them, right? right? And, he, and, he, he's, uh, and that's the, in other words, trying to put these bombs on airplanes, right? And we can't detect them because there's no metal in the bomb. And that's extremely dangerous, right? That's more dangerous, and it's been recognized by the Department of Homeland Security, more dangerous than al-Nusra than ISIS is, because ISIS has no plans at this moment in time to attack the United States. I mean, down the road they might, but they have, there's no uh, specific um, threat that the Department of Homeland Security might have identified with ISIS. However, al-Nusra does have many significant threats. So uh, in the near term, al-Nusra is probably more dangerous to the United States than actually ISIS uh, in the media term. Do you think that the mainstream media, even Fox, Keith, in a lot of ways, is just trying to play their political points of view in this uh, situation with ISIS and that they're scaring the American public in certain aspects just because this is going to be a way to earn political points for the midterm election? Um, you know... Well, my opinion of Fox is that uh, they're an arm of the, of the Republican Party, uh, just as CNN is an arm of, of the Democrat Party. Right, and, right. And, I, and I don't think Fox is a right-wing organ, uh, thing. I think it's more progressive. I think, I think uh, Roger, I mean, if you look who's on, Carl Rove, I mean, he's the, he's the epitome of, uh, of the establishment of the Republic, Republican Party. Well, yeah, they have liberals on, too, but, you know, uh, well, also CNN has conservatives on as well, exactly, from time yeah. to time, just as... But but uh, you know I, I think I think uh, the American media is more ignorant, right, than it is um, got a certain agenda. I think the problem with with the American media they don't even they don't even know what they don't know. Exactly. Oh, Keith, when we get back, we're going to co- talk more a little bit about the ISIS and and the war. Uh, and then uh, a little bit more take about your your concerns and fear that we should have for a longer period of time, especially what you and Walid are doing and Ted and the organization. Again, we're talking to Keith Davis from Rescue Christians and the Walid Shabbat Foundation, and you're watching The Neil Haley Show, and we'll be back in just a moment. Join us for the first annual Bethel Park Zombie Walk, Saturday, October 25th from 3 to 5 p.m. at Bethel Park High School parking lot. The walk will be followed by a zombie costume contest and light freshmen's. Register at Bethel Park Municipal Building's reception desk between October 1st and October 15th during regular office hours. For more information, call BPTV at 412-831-3304. There is a $10 registration fee. All proceeds benefit the Bethel Park Volunteers Scholarship Fund. We hope you will join us for this new Bethel Park holiday tradition. back to the Neil Haley show and uh, so far learning different things about ISIS in a way compared to what we hear in the mainstream media but that's what Neil Haley does he uncovers the things and I have Keith Davis from the director of Rescue Christians and also the Walid Shubat Foundation and now Keith here's my my point the concern that I have about the entire Middle East 
are the amount of Christians that are killed each and every day if they don't convert. And why is it that some of the media wants to ignore that completely? What do you think the reason is there? Uh, well, it's p political correctness. Um, I mean, it's the main reason. I mean, uh, you know, obviously, if Christians are being killed and murdered, and it's and they're and you're exposing that, um, you're going to cause a, an extreme visceral hatred towards Islam. Right? That's what they're afraid of. Um, but you know, uh, and it's tragic. I mean, but it's not only it's not only the media. It's also in the churches. The churches don't want to talk about this either. They don't want to deal with it. Right, um, I don't know. Maybe the evangelicals don't want to want to get involved. I think Catholic churches because... really spoke out on this, so I would say, yeah, Christians, but not the Catholic Church, especially. They're really trying to bring out what's happening in Iraq and in Syria and different places like that. But I, I don't think it's hidden as much. But I agree with you, the evangelical stuff. I'm not heard a lot because you're looking at again the Republican Party and a lot of them, and they're not bringing up the murdering of Christians to the point. So do you think, Keith, that that's the reason why we're going to war with ISIS? Or do you think it's just, again, another political ploy and a certain thing of we're going to... Was it all the murder? Well, I, I, well, I, right. Well, the, the, what, the reason we're going to war with ISIS is because of the New York Times. I mean, okay. the liberal media had started to focus on this, which turned public opinion. In other words, public opinion uh, had ignored this because the liberal media... Right, and the mainstream media had, for the most part, ignored the dangers, right, uh, of Islam, uh, and Islam as a peaceful religion, you know. Right, yeah. right. And then all of a sudden, these two journalists get killed, and the media picked up on it, right. and which switched public opinion uh, against ISIS and against the radicals, and to do something about it, which then caused Obama to to do something because his own party was on board to do something, right, but. Obama doesn't want to go to Iraq. He doesn't want to put boots on the ground. He wants to, because he doesn't want to be looking like his policy has failed. Which is, I mean, everybody who who, know, who understands what's going on, right, and understands a little bit of what's going on in the world, understands that Obama's policies have completely failed, right. And uh, we're always back in the wrong horse, and we're always doing the wrong thing. But we'd be doing the wrong thing in the Middle East, yeah. not just since Obama, but since 1948. <laughs> so, so why uh, since 1948? Give us that date and the reasons. What what mistakes have we made? Well, well actually, you can go back further. I mean, the policies of the United States from the West, whether it's with Britain and France, and then and then later in the United States, goes back to obviously 19, 1916. And mm -hmm. basically, we 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 basically created these artificial countries, right in the Middle East, right to pit pit one against the other. Okay. We put in strong men. Right, uh, in order to, to make sure that our oil interests of the West, both Britain, France, and the, and the United States, were taken care of, wow. and our policy, basically, up to the recent up to recent times, has been basically just to make sure that the barrel of oil uh, kept flowing and at the right price. I mean, mm -hmm. that's basically been our policy in the, in the Middle East. What would your uh, policy, that, Keith, you know, Keith, if you were running the country or were involved in politically, what would your solution be for the Middle East? And my solution in the Middle East would be, uh, obviously, to, 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 to see, the problem is uh, with the Middle East is Islam okay. and, and radical Islam. That's the problem in the Middle East. Right. And so you, can, you cannot have, right, uh, and once you create the dictators, you need to keep the dictators, yeah. right? Uh, the policy of the Middle East over the last 10 years, over the last six years under Obama, was to remove the dictators and allow radical Islam to fit in. When I said to you earlier that I believe that Obama's a Muslim Brotherhood, well, the reason I said that was because he has been helping the Muslim Brotherhood with every policy to enable the Muslim Brotherhood to take over. They took over Libya, right? Uh, it's a complete lie and fabrication that we went to try and, and uh, stop a humanitarian disaster. That was the premise that we went into Libya. What we've actually done is the opposite. There now is a human disaster. There is people by the hundreds and thousands of people are leaving Libya on little boats okay. trying to get to Italy and, and Europe. And do you see anything out of the media? If the media, if the liberal media would show that, it would show a complete disaster in Libya. Libya has been a complete disaster. It's now a failed state. You have two factions fighting each other over, and they're both Islamic fundamentalists, over power uh, of Libya. We try, we, we, we depose Mubarak, and we allow the Muslim Brotherhood to take over right there. 
uh, calling it the Arab Spring. We have the same problem in Tunisia. We have the same problem. Now, well, why, do, why do we want to get rid of Assad in order to empower the Muslim Brotherhood, to so, empower the, the Sunni Muslims to take over Syria, right, which right. is another mo a problem there. Now, Keith, we're talking to Keith Davis uh, from Rescue Christians and also the Walid Shabbat Foundation about the danger of ISIS, and you bring up boots on the ground. Why can't airstrikes take care of this? So this is the big thing. Obama's... Uh, I'm not a Obama okay, well, I'm not a military expert. Okay. However, all the military experts are saying that boots on the ground is required to take care of ISIS because, because you don't want to arm the, the, the so-called moderate right rebels because they're not moderate. Anyone right. who's got a brain between their ears knows they're not moderate. Right? The Iraqi army is a failed, is a failed army. They all ran and, and turned tail and all their equipment was captured by ISIS, and you want them now to fight mm -hmm. against, uh, against ISIS. You need a professional army who knows what they're doing, and they can take, a bit, take care of business with these guys in five minutes with our air power. But to, uh, what, what Obama has said, if you looked at his speech there the, uh, a couple of weeks ago, okay. he said that he wanted to, this was going to take years. In the same breath, he's talked about the Christians. He wants the Christians to remain in the Middle East, and they've been there for 2,000 years. So basically, we have got a million refugees, 200,000 are Christian, are sitting in Kurdistan with tents. Some of them have no place mm -hmm. to stay, no food, no nothing, and he wants them to stay there for 10 years oh, yeah. while he takes care of ISIS. It's going to take care of in, 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 in three or four weeks. If they stand, so so stand boots in on the ground, you think you could take care of it quickly then? But I know you're not well, a military well, expert yet, but yeah. If the, if the American military... Would go, to go in there with with a powerful force of 50, 60, 80, 100,000 troops, right. they, they would be able to destroy ISIS in two or three weeks, maybe a month, right, and then pull out at least 10,000 troops there, like he should have done uh, four or five years whenever, for when, we, when we left the first time. In other words, we now got to go back and do what we did the last time, right. but if that's if you wanted to, to destroy ISIS. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to do it, then why bother at all? Again, we're talking to Keith Davis, and now, Keith, uh, the, the point I'm saying with ISIS is that you're not, you don't think they're that militarily uh, strong if there's boots on the ground. Airstrikes will do nothing but keep this going for a long period of time, and it'll be another Afghanistan in certain aspects, and things will keep getting worse and worse in, in Iraq again, and then we all know the issues that are happening in Syria. Now... Your, your take when you're talking about the Muslim Brotherhood and things like this and, and all these organizations that one, if ISIS is taken care of, there'll be another problem after that, right? If we defeat ISIS or ISIL, then the same thing's going to happen with another group coming out of the woodwork, correct? Well, well, that's true if we don't, if we don't leave troops on the ground. In other words, we don't leave uh, at least uh, 15, 20, 25, 30,000 troops on a permanent station there to make make sure we keep the peace. Uh, obviously, uh, the uh, American public uh, may not be too popular with that. Uh, we also, you know, need to forget this to creating democracy in the Middle East. Uh, as long as you have Islam as a dominant religion in the Middle East, right, you're not yeah, going to exactly. have democracy. It's just not possible because uh, it's like having capitalistic communism. I mean, you know, it doesn't work. Yeah, you know, it so it's uh, uh, you know, free, freedom and Islam doesn't exist together, right? And it's all political. And, and you know, yeah. uh, people, you know, in America, the objective of Islam is to take over this country with uh, Sharia law. And that's what its objective is. Uh, and we can't get away from that. And, and all these so-called modern Muslims you hear on the radio and television, they, what they say in English, I bet you if you listen to what they say in Arabic, it's the complete opposite. And that's what we pointed out in our book, mm -hmm. The Case for Islamophobia. It explains all this. And Keith, you're the co-author of that book. The the book. No, I'm the I'm the publisher of the book. The publisher of the book. Okay, okay. Yeah, Wally Chubad and Ben Barak are the writers of the book. Okay. Now, the, the final solution in this, before I have to let you go, Keith, is uh, is you said that we have to fight the the, the terrorist issues. We have to fight the um, the, the the Islamic uh, terrorists. We cannot sit and say, oh, we'll take their, this group, but not that. We're still in the war on terror. We should have continued to do that. And by leaving troops, getting troops out of Iraq and now trying to get them out of Afghanistan just proves that all we did is never going to succeed, We're, that you have to always be there uh, if you don't have a dictator in control of the country. That, well, that, yeah, I mean, 
I mean, we we have troops still in Germany. We don't need troops in Germany. Uh, well, we actually do for the Russian threat, but 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 uh, we have troops in Japan. We have troops in South Korea, right? So what what so what's the big deal of having troops in Iraq? Because we maintain the peace. Exactly, what's the big deal? Yeah. In other words, if, uh, but we need to be in control and we need to dominate these countries uh, yeah, so that yeah. they don't cause trouble. Right, and they're under our influence, and they do what we say, and how, and and then well, we'll be safer. But to, to leave them to their own to their own uh, accord, and uh, I mean, what we've done is, if you look what's happened in Iraq, when we pulled out, there there's been strife in the country, the Sunnis against the Shia, yeah. right? You have the influence of Iran, you got the influence of Turkey, right? And all you have is civil war and people blowing each other up. So exactly. why not why not put in a colonial power like America who can actually keep the peace? Exactly. You know, I remember Wally telling the story about, uh, you know, when Israel occupied the whole of the West Bank and, they didn't, and the Palestinian Authority wasn't in existence, right? And Wally used to say, I pray for the occupation when we had peace. All right, cool. Can you, where can we find information on you and learn more about you? Where's the best place to go? Yeah, sure. The best place to go, we, we have a, a blog that's very popular and you get the latest information and uh, on shubat.com and... Uh, uh, you'll, you'll hear the truth, the whole truth about really what's going on in the Middle East, and not what you see in the mainstream media at shubat.com, S H O E B A T.com. All right. Thanks a lot for calling the program, Keith, and take care. All right. All right. God bless. Bye -bye. Okay. Well, God bless you. All right. That was Keith Davis. And, and interesting. Now, I want your take. Email me at haleytotaltutor.org. Tweet me at Total Tutor. Keith has a different perspective than the right and left. Tell me what you think, and uh, next week on the program, I'm going to have a studio guest, NFL uh, Super Bowl champion, coming to BPPT, BPTV Studios in Pittsburgh, Bethel Park, Darnell Dinkins. And then I, the week after, another amazing guest. Go to my website, toldsurda.net, for more information. And uh, I want to hear from you. Uh, was this a little controversial, especially when he brought up with Obama? That's not my issue or my views. I'm just trying to take it right down the center. Good take, good take, uh, good talk to all you guys in the TV land and radio land, and have a great week. We'll talk next week. Good day, everyone.